Hey guys, welcome to Pillbox Movies. I'm Hank, and today we will be concluding our series on the human voice with the 2020 adaptation by Pedro Almodovar, starring Tilda Swinton. Um, what a long journey this has been through four decades, it's not four decades, it's three decades, through <laughs> three decades of the human voice. Previously, we had watched the versions with Sophia Loren, Rosamund Pike, and Ingrid Bergman, and we find ourselves at last and Sophia Loren. at the movie which inspired this series. The 2020 version uh, experienced a delay in release due to the pandemic and is out now. It stars Tilda Swinton as a older woman who is being rebuked by a lover on the phone and is having a low-key meltdown about it. Uh, Almodovar is genuinely one of the great directors who still lives in our time. His films are moody, expressive, intoxicating. Uh, Talk to her is genuinely one of the most gripping films I've ever seen. If you haven't seen Talk to Her, you truly need to go see it now. Uh, Julieta, I think, is a great somber character study and the skin that i live in is one of the most memorable uh, thrillers that i've seen in the past 10 years and um pain and glory is okay <laughs> anyways i i think that uh the human voice is such a kind of um restrictive and base level kind of work it kind of demands a a, a set an actress, a phone, and not much else. And so, based on those restrictions, I am, have kind of been really curious and itching to see what Almodovar does with the format and how he can perhaps address the strengths of the piece and perhaps redress the weaknesses or style them into his own presentation. So yeah, I'm excited to watch this and see what the two of them do. So let's do that. It's a beautiful, beautiful dress. I, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan in the world of Tilda Swinton, but whatever she's doing for her cosmetic routine is working. <laughs> Almodovar already going for something very, very, very different. His color blocking is just unimaginable. It's just so divine. Oh my god. I think that's def this is definitely an aspect that's shared in most of the adaptations. The opening spot is trying to create a question that the that the rest of the film or short will answer. There has there's an air of mystery and suspense. So definitely in the Ingrid Bergman version, the aim was to create uh, a narrative around the eventual suicide of the of the woman. And I'm wondering if Almodovar is going for something in that same vein here. But in some ways, I I, I want to say because the the axe is so violent, it's such a like a powerful symbol that um, it's actually kind of pliable in its applications for later on in the film. It doesn't necessarily have to be used for a suicide. It could be used for something technical, something household. My guess is that she's eventually going to use it to sever the telephone cord. His apartments just look so good. They always make you want to live in, in Spain. There was a time, four straight years until three days ago. The the, the apartments in like Pain and Glory, or in or, read, or in All About My Mother, and you always came or back. talk to her. The night was ours. It's a strange collection of TVs. Mornings. What a weird selection of films. All That Heaven Allows, Kill Bill, Breakfast at Tiffany's, um, what else was there? Uh, Phantom Thread. I'll say with, um, with Almodovar, some of the qualities that he indulges in. Some directors I seek out because they are so much like me, and some, um kind of represent 
aspects or uh, quirks that I don't usually seek out in my own life, but like like enjoying vicariously. For Almodovar, his indulgences in vanity, in in fastidiousness, in high drama, in melodrama, they're all aspects that I love indulging in while, by watching his films. Intensely saturated color palettes. Okay, so cutting up his suit. In some ways, I also like really like watching um, how I, I don't know how to describe it, how pro programmatical Almodovar is. A lot of people like to compare like like David Fincher or, um, or Jonathan Glazer to Hitchcock. I actually think that Almodovar is really, really Hitchcockian in the way that he programs his sequences and, and his shots in such a like a progression, an escalation of of like, you know, kind of like medium shot to close up or elevation and speed or elevation and tone and ideas and images that um, it's all very clear and expressive and kind of digestible in the same way that Hitchcock is. Like the way that Tilda Swinton held the axe, it wasn't like she just grabbed the axe. She had to grab it and hold it in a way that it was presenting to the camera frame so that you understood the axe and the, the purpose it would be used for. A lot of manipulation of like kind of objects within a shot in order to imbue them with a kind of symbolic heft. A thing is not just a thing. A pipe is not just a pipe in an Almodovar film. God, I love this. I love her walking from the set onto the set of her apartment. This is so refined in a way I just I haven't really expected from these adaptations. These adaptations, they've been, you know, good or bad, they've been focusing on the actors themselves and the director uh, usually isn't the focal point. And so a lot of the direction in these other adaptations have taken a very, very, very deliberate backseat. Seeing such strong intentionality in the direction of this is just, it's such a fun offset to just watching the performances. I hate we're using airbuds for this. Uh, that like takes me out of it. Hello. That's just of a, too oh, much of a time. I, I was in the street. I can't hear the phone in the street. Okay. This is battling too much with verisimilitude with for me. Somehow the, the movie set is more believable and, uh, than the earbuds for me. Oh, also I saw Fabian, my agent. Okay, so she's going to be. She is an actress in this version. In the future, I'm going to be a practical woman for a change. <laughs> And, uh, and I have to keep occupied. I do like how loose they are with the script. It's making it kind of a little bit, feel a little bit more lived in. To save you and to save me. I've loved you. A little life. Oh my gosh. Now, now I can uh, tie this in with uh, paperback dreams. You realize <laughs> it scared me to imagine I might be sticking the knife in your chest. That's fun. This is... Kill you. No, 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 no. I don't want to no. kill you. This is interesting. I'm, I'm like, it's like uh, I'm like, it's like battling right now. I don't know if and, I can. And, and the... So this is this is very much a um, an Almodovar archetype, like the hysterical woman who, um, in one breath, might like kill her lover, and the next might, you know, stab herself. It's interesting to take that kind of like fiery type that Almodovar portrays in his films and see how Tilda Swinton stacks up to it. This might also just be because I just saw the Ingrid Bergman version and comparing the two like uh, Ingrid Bergman kind of makes you believe that her character is on the verge of suicide and I just don't know if I can assign the same kind of feeling from me personally that I get from Tilda Swinton. Avoid attracts her like a magnet. It's like her fear of falling pushes her to jump. 
I'm, like, I'm, I think she has the verbal the parts in, in a lot of her nice. roles down. She's, like, a very, very intelligent actress. But I get the sense from Swinton, just personally, that she I, I can create the outline. Of myself. I don't know. We need to talk about Kevin. Uh, yes, I'll, uh, Michael I'll Clayton. But, uh, it, but in my age her performances are very women ironic. Of my age are fashionable again. Part of the, the charm and also the frustration of Cocteau's script is like, you're trapped in this woman's dialogue um, as her every thought revolves around a man. And there's it's almost like a black hole. There's like no light reflecting out of it. There's no like... It's it's just like so hard to get tangents out of it, um, and so any anything you glean about the woman's personality, her behaviors, her mannerisms, in some way has to be um, based off of the way she talks to the man on the phone and the way she um, kind of manifests her own fears and describing what she thinks she's uh, what she thinks the man doesn't see in her what she thinks like uh he his attitude toward her is and so kind of breaking it open and have her having her be like kind of self-reflective sufficiently self-reflective and and kind of like actualized outside of him in this kind of like role as like the film actress or the t uh, or the or, or the star, um, it kind of gives a sense of his her, her life being, like, resolvable without him. Like, there's a baseline that's been established that she can reset to in his absence. I don't know. It but just I'm feels a little bit different. It feels a little bit humor. wandery to me. It's very inconvenient not being able to be funny with the one person you'd most like to be funny with. No, I wasn't funny with you. I was special, daring submissive thin interesting passionate and fortunate does she sound passionate and though and i was a different woman so different that at times i think you forgot that i was also a woman it doesn't sound like she's too into him yes, in this version I accepted the situation it's a very different I'm dynamic they seem I to have i sharing you but Given the circumstances, I accepted the humiliation. This is, I mean, this is an interesting, uh, that, that aspect of it is different. It, like, okay, because this is, this is really different, because the other, <laughs> this is, this is like, kind of like post-lapsarian. This is so different. This is so different. drunk, so intoxicated. Okay. I forgot about reality. No, this is good. In the other relationships, it seems like the woman was like reinvigorated by her relationship with the man, and it was all like fruitful and generative, and that that it terminated was like the breaking point for her. For this woman, it's like it's the seeds of that badness were already in that relationship. Their dynamic was already one that was punitive, and ridiculous and these are the rules of the game the law of desire and negotiating control and so it's it's, it's an interesting different dynamic uh there's a degree of submissiveness that she enjoys in it that she's she she was uh resting control within that relationship and now that um the relationship is terminated. She's like feeling that helplessness of that of that control being gone, and oh, also trying to reestablish that control. Your letters. How could I burn them? I'm sending you everything. Your letters and mine and all the notes. Pedro. I don't know about this piano theme. <laughs> this is a little bit too you have them there, too cloying for me. You don't need to worry that I'll try to blackmail you or sell them to a tabloid. This 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 version of the woman is really punitive. She's threatening him as she's begging him. It's a really different dynamic, and that part I find really fascinating. I think I could read this version of Tilda Swinton. She's like since I can't send them with the correspondence. Really, really mad at this dude in a way that the other women were not. It it really it evokes the axe. 
You don't say goodbye to a woman you've loved. They do it worse these days. <laughs> they do much worse. Call. How could I go to the theater in this state? I haven't left the house. You said you would come. It is true. I'm actually really happy. And don't come this is a fucking angry act. version of the woman. It's so <laughs> fucking different from the other versions. No, I, I went out once to buy something. But don't ask me what, because I'm not going to tell you. It was an axe. Am I all right? <laughs> <laughs> Are you really asking me that? <laughs> I've done a total oh, 180 till the switch, right. and it's really good in this version. <laughs> and then I took a little pills. When you called, I was unconscious. Thirteen <laughs> pills. I counted. <laughs> she's a fucking actress. She's she's lying to him. She's truthful, but she's also lying. I love that she she said that she was unconscious because she took pills. She took pills, but she wasn't unconscious. She saw the phone ringing and she ignored it and she answered it later. I fucking love. She's she's an actress. She's none 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 of the other the other versions were were really sincere and forthright about their emotions and. Uh, that's that's great. That's I'm not saying anything bad about that. That's telling a different story. This version is, I kind of I think it fits into the melodramatic like carapace that she's <laughs> she's not just freaking out because like this is the worst thing that's happening in her life. She's freaking out because she freaks out because she's a freak out kind of woman. And so when she gets this call, she's going to act as dramatically as possible as like an attack on him and and make him feel guilty and this is really like a, <laughs> a very very edible performance in comparison to the other versions and i think it's great I, <laughs> absolutely none of the other versions play this tack of like the woman being like a vindictive lover and a vindictive mother to a certain degree and saying like this like look how you're hurting me M most of the time the other the other women are like trying to hold back their tears and it just keeps gushing forth and they can't control themselves and they're like i am sorry I'm, i apologize i shouldn't be this emotional but i just am and then this version it's like you did this to me and i'm gonna fucking show it to you and i think it's a really i'm thrilled i am thrilled I I knew that the combination wasn't lethal. Yeah, there you go. She's she's histrionic. I'm not trying to blackmail you. <laughs> I just want to finish what I was telling you. Yeah, okay. Your... Today I got dressed for the first time. I had to put on a lot of makeup. I looked so terrible. <laughs> and I wanted you to find me looking pretty. Oh, I get yeah, that. Pretty. I get that feeling. Darling, I... Did you hang up? Coward. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Just completely ridiculous. This is so, so smart. I'm like... I'm speechless. Almodovar just manages to surprise me all the time. I was I was just thinking like how like, you know, Almodovar made his career starting by... Oh, it's interpreting melodrama yes we got cut off it and like so um, thank you for calling back and like soap opera format to say goodbye yes and I really wanted him to like so re-engage in that kind of feeling uh with this adaptation but if he did it directly it would seem like too sincere and it would seem like him bending to the uh to the requirements of the play perhaps too much and you'd wonder if he'd be able to like put his own perspective in it but but in this interpretation he's he's playing around with the soap opera ishness go out onto the terrace where you are Oh, you're not at home? Well, wherever you are. <laughs> but it starts to, like, a kind of, uh, his and kind of, like, are. cynicism and intelligence and, like, sense of humor into it, and it's really, I'm just really effective. To go to the window and turn to where we lived together. <laughs> I think it's great. This is such a vindictive version of the woman. This is, this is the Joker version of the woman. It really is a, like, incredibly refreshingly different I take you don't see me. I'm on the terrace too, and it's like take it's like it take, matter that you don't see me it's like taking the the form of the character of the woman and like 
yeah. kind of like setting it's, it free, so like giving it a version of a victory, I'm what's burning, and my love. and I'm gonna hang up now. Simultaneously, like Almodovar saying, like he loves his and he loves his character and appreciates it, but also saying like uh, he he won't settle for the character being. Uh, Tragic at the end, and defeated. It would be a. It should be a victory for this character. I want to talk to you. So I'm your master now. All right. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this was brilliant. I just like, cause I had no interest. Really, I had no interest in seeing, like, a 2020 Almodovar character study uh, with with Tilda Swinton. And I don't think he, he was aiming for a character study in this at all whatsoever. This is like a metatextual commentary on the, the woman and the human voice itself. And, like, I, I, this, this, this was, like, really celebratory and beautiful. And, like, I... At the end of... Um, all about my mother. Uh, Almodovar has this kind of like special thanks or like um, tribute where he says like um, something to the effect of like this is for all of the the beautiful um, uh, melodramatic women or the the beautiful mothers in film, and it's like Romy Schneider and like uh, and and. Um, and uh, uh, Jenna Rollins and stuff. And it's just this kind of tribute to these women who uh, managed to plumb and, ex and, and you know, show off huge emotions in their performances and are inspirations to people and to women and to men and to gay men and directors like himself. And I think, I think that's what this is. I think this is like a celebration of the character of the woman and setting her free of the shackles of like of maudlin tragedy and i don't think it's like saying like oh cocteau's version is like a sap or 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 sexist or demeaning or base i think it's a celebration of it and saying like this character is beautiful, but we're not gonna uh, we're not gonna appreciate her beauty in her defeat anymore. This was raising up that that character um, by purging it with fire, and in that sense, I think that Tilda Swinton was a really really great choice for this. I think this this kind of like settled a debate for me because uh, I don't know if I was ready ready or or if I was were, was going to be able to see Tilda Swinton pull off like um, a focused, emotional, real, and and kind of cathartic performance in this. And because like I said, I think she's a very ironic actress. And so I don't think this movie was playing to her creating that kind of, at least from the human voice framework, that kind of uh, introspective, self-immolating like uh me punishing myself on stage for the for the audience's uh enjoyment or cathartic release i don't think she's built for that kind of performance and i think pedro almodovar kind of utilized her in a perf performance that wasn't that i it was the, this was a great collaboration and i think it swinton's particular attributes complemented Almodovar's aims really, really nicely. This is just all around good. Um, I don't think you, I think you'd get the general meaning of this adaptation um, if you were to watch it. But to be clear, this is not an adaptation of the human voice. This is not a faithful adaptation of the human voice. This is an adaptation that is like metatextually um, interpreting the meaning of the human voice. I <laughs> like. <laughs> You can enjoy this on your own. If you enjoy this and you watch it and you haven't ever seen the human voice, you're not gonna, it's, uh, I'm saying to you that it's not the human voice. It's a response to the human voice. And it's fucking good. <laughs> she didn't use the axe in the end. I'm sad about that, but in true Amadovar fashion, it ends with fire. It's just really good. <laughs> For now, this was really good. Yeah, that was the human voice 2020. Uh, I don't know. Find it. Give it a watch. Watch the other versions first, though. I really, really, 
personally must insist that uh, if you want to get the most out of this version, you should watch a, a more straightforward or sincere adaptation of the human voice first. Give it a watch. And until next time, keep watching good movies. Hamadovar, you've done it again. <laughs> He's too good. <sighs> I'm just shocked. I'm just shocked.